Were we just flat out wrong about the Pittsburgh Panthers? And out of 17 ACC football teams, how many of them still have a shot to make it to the ACC championship game? Let's assemble the squad. You're talking ball with the ACC squad. From Florida State to North Carolina, from Syracuse to Miami, and from NC State to California, it's the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network bringing you scoops, breakdowns, and the most comprehensive preview of the upcoming ACC weekend. Hang on, it could get loud, it could get heated, and it will definitely be fun. Squad up, you're part of the ACC squad. Shout out to the everydayers, and thank you so much for making the ACC squad your first listen and your first watch today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. We'll talk about where the ACC sits in the updated AP rankings. Big games coming up in Week 10 this weekend. Uh, The agony and the ecstasy of the great games this past weekend in Week 9. I am Alex Dono from Locked on Canes, joined by... Jackson Holzer locked on Syracuse. Grayson Boone locked on Wolfpack. Dalton Pence locked on Louisville. J.J. Jackson locked on Blue Devils. Miami and Blue Devils are going to be going head-to-head this weekend, the return of Manny Diaz. But I feel like, Jackson, I I need to let you buy the first round. And I, I think you're lucky that Kenton Gibbs is not with us on this one because he would probably remind you that at some point Kyle McCord was going to have the Kyle McCord game and lo and behold there it was I disagree with you I I wish Kenton was here see here's the thing with Kenton we've we've debated a lot with Kenton right all of us here have debated with Kenton at some point or another I pretty much know what he is going to say a lot of times I, I I have a good idea of what Kenton would say if he was here with us right now he would be like ah see that's the Kyle McCord we all know we knew it was coming right well I have to disagree with him on this because that would imply that Kyle McCord's played that poorly in his life that was the worst game he's ever played in his life yeah. that was the worst game ever for forget college for a moment okay his entire life He was a five-star recruit in high school. He was throwing to Marvin Harrison in high school. I I bet you he didn't have a five-interception game where three of them went into the end zone. I bet you he didn't have that in high school. I bet you since he was a five-star in high school, he was also really good in middle school. And he was really good in Pop Warner, too. I guarantee you that was the worst game of his life. His life. So to sit here and say, well, that's the kind of accord we all knew it was going to happen. We all knew (laughs) <laughs> you're wrong because that was the worst game ever. Yeah. So seriously, happy. if you told me going into the game that Kyle McCord was going to throw three touchdowns and that Eli Holstein would be held to 108 yards, two touchdowns, no turnovers, but still only a hundred yards. Right. I would say that Syracuse probably won the game. Oh, by the way, Syracuse outgained Pitt. They had more time of possession than Pitt. There's just one thing I'm leaving out, though, is that those three touchdowns from Kyle McCord all went to Pitt in the first half. Yeah, and and Pitt comes away with the... It was bad. It was terrible. 41 to 13 final score, Pitt over Syracuse. And and if anyone else wants to jump in on that game, and and also, also, Dalton, uh, are we we taking Pitt seriously? Because all, all the Panthers do is continue to win football games they're 7 and 0 overall, 3 and 0 now in ACC play. The Panthers, they've got a tough road ahead cuz they still have to play SMU this weekend and they still have to play Clemson, but they also have the opportunity to play spoiler against those teams. They do. And there's a certain level of credit that has to be given to teams that win their games because if it were that easy, everyone would be 7 and 0. So we have to give them credit for for starting out the season and and playing the way they are. You can only handle the teams on your schedule. So you have to give Pat Narduzzi and, and the Pittsburgh I will say offense deserves more credit because they're one of the best scoring offenses in the country. Defense is not terrible, but not great. You know, they're sort of um a little bit above average, I would say, just inside. A little above average? Top 50 <laughs> are scoring you sure? defense. 
They resembled the steel curtain last Thursday. What? <laughs> what? I well, mean, they play in that stadium. So I guess a little uh, above it's average. Not, it's not our fault that Kyle McCord didn't know what team he was playing for on Thursday. That's uh, you're, 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 maybe you're right. Maybe you're but right. Um, in all honesty, you know, Kenton, we know what he would say after, and you know, Jackson hit it on the head, but he would also talk about, well, you all were wrong about Pittsburgh. And it goes back to what I was saying a couple weeks ago, if you remember, is that, yes, you 100% have to give Pittsburgh credit. They are rightfully ranked, and and I'm okay with that. But now you get into two really key matchups, and I hope that Kevin Jennings is good to go this weekend when they play SMU. I just – this is where the rubber meets the road, and I think that Pittsburgh finally plays a really good team. No disrespect, Jackson, but they finally play – a really good team. And I think a split is the most that they can do here. I think that there is a very real chance that they go 0-2. And and there's no shame in that. They've won the games up until this point. But I I can't sit here and say with a straight face that I truly believe in Pittsburgh when you look at the seven teams they played. And and I will wrap this up pretty quickly. When the Louisville had a very favorable schedule last year, they beat Notre Dame. It was a good win. But outside of that, they didn't play many other teams. So last year when they were sitting at 10-1, and one, a lot of national talking heads said, well, they really haven't played anybody. I, I, I don't really believe in them yet. Same case here with Pittsburgh. Yeah, I'm in lockstep with Dalton. I, For one, as someone who has both doubted Pittsburgh and thought that Syracuse would win this game, completely shocked at how that first half went. Five picks for Kyle McCord, three of them being taken back to the house. What a nightmare for Syracuse fans. But I agree with Dalton in the sense that, yes, credit absolutely should be given to Pittsburgh. They've played seven games. They've won all seven of them. They've done everything that they're supposed to do up until this point. So they certainly deserve to be ranked. I honestly thought they'd be ranked a little bit higher than they are, but I guess we'll see how that shakes out in the next couple weeks. They're a good football team. They're they're just flat out good. They're a good football team. I thought the crowd on Thursday night was exciting. Pittsburgh fans should be excited about what they're putting on the field. But, yes, the uh, the road ahead of them certainly does get a lot more difficult. What a road it is. I mean, yeah, playing SMU on the road this weekend for Pitt is going to be a test. Then they've got UVA before uh, hosting Clemson. So we saw the environment that they had in that game against Syracuse. I would expect a pretty raucous turnout as well uh, in that Clemson game here in a couple of weeks. I think we'll learn more about this Pitt team with this next two out of three stretch that they've got going on right now, but uh, I have not been giving them credit at all, really, and probably should start doing that. I mean, it's impressive what they've been able to do. So, okay, we were just talking about Syracuse, who usually when you throw five interceptions, you're going to lose a football game. Now, JJ, how in the heck did Duke (laughs) go plus six in the turnover margin last week against SMU? Six takeaways, zero turnovers. How did the Blue Devils not win that game? Yeah, it it could be worse in looking at that margin, which makes it feel so much worse. Manny Diaz talked about it after the fact in this one. There were two or three fumbles that were recovered by SMU. One was recovered and overturned. There was an interception that was taken back uh, because of defensive pass interference. So there should have been even more turnovers that Duke was able to pick up on the defensive side of the ball, but not able to score any points off the six turnovers, zero points off of turnovers. Didn't even think that was possible. Special teams was horrific in this one for Duke. They missed a PAT. They missed a 40-yarder. They had a 30-yarder as time expires blocked, which would have won it at the end. And I will defend Manny Diaz in making the decision to go for two at the end in overtime trying to walk away with a win, considering how poorly the special teams had been playing that night. He said after the fact that had nothing to do with his decision. He liked the looks they were getting offensively and was going to go for it no matter what. But I think it was when you think about what Duke had done in the special teams department, you had to go ahead and try and go for two and go for the win. Um, man, yeah. that, was, uh, that was tough to watch for sure. The defense has been awesome. Uh, no surprise. That's Manny Diaz's side of the ball. That's what he takes a lot of pride in. But it's tough to watch the Duke offense at times, guys. Listen, that's yeah. the dilemma with going for two there because if you get it, you're celebrated. If you don't, 
obviously it's, it's the exact opposite. And when you're going up against an SMU offense, that's known for putting up points and your offense has sort of struggled all game. And you have a, the ball within the five yard line. You have one play to score to win the game. I'm okay with Duke going for it there because I mean, again, I don't feel like going trading or, or trading points for points with SMU is probably the smartest decision for honestly, for 80% of the ACC schools. I thought well, it was amazing post game. Rhett Lashley sounded the most dejected I've ever heard a coach <laughs> in a game that they won. Yeah, flat right? out said, "I don't know what to do right now. I we didn't we didn't deserve to win this game. They quite frankly did not. How you turn the ball over six times, but still imagine to escape with a win? That's incredible. And a couple weeks ago, when I first brought up SMU, I'm like, "All right, they're still undefeated in, in uh, conference play. Let's keep an eye on these guys." Here they are, a very favorable last four games, three of which are at home. They have a big matchup with Pitt uh, coming up this week, but SMU is lucky to escape. They're still undefeated, guys. I think they're going to make a run at this thing. I disagree with you on the deserve to deserve to win. So I'm his, a, his I'm, words, not mine. I, I, yeah, and he's wrong. He's wrong because you know I I'm a big hockey fan, and there's this website where there's the something called the deserve a win meter where it'll show like if, in a hockey game, like, oh, this team was out playing them. And so that team would win 80% of the time, right? And then you see that that team loses and you're like, well, how did they lose? Well, sorry, you turn the ball over six times, you still won. Well, yeah, because Duke couldn't take advantage of it. <laughs> so yeah, they, they did deserve to win because Duke was handed the game and said, Nope. Nope. We don't want it. We don't want it. We don't want to take advantage of six turnovers. We it hurts. Give it right back to you. So his words are wrong. They did deserve to win. Now, are, can they have six turnovers going forward in the game and expect to win? Well, as a Syracuse fan, I can tell you that no, you're not going to win going forward doing that. But for this one game, you did deserve to win because at the end of the day, you had more points than the other team. So I pushed back on that comment. You deserve to win. Give yourself a little bit of credit. Just, you know, don't have six turnovers again. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, Miami. They stayed unbeaten, uh, beating the most lifeless Florida State team that I've quite frankly ever seen. They haven't been this bad since the 1970s, but Miami took advantage. And also got to talk about uh, Dalton's Louisville Cardinals, who who pulled off a, a massive comeback. Uh, that was a lot of fun to watch. You guys want to keep it locked right here. We're nowhere near done yet on this brand new episode of the ACC squad. We've been having a blast all season long at FanDuel. And there's some interesting numbers in the ACC coming up this weekend. Uh, Miami Hurricanes are 21 and a half point favorites at home against the Duke Blue Devils. Uh, Syracuse are underdogs at home against Virginia Tech. Clemson favored by double digits at home against Louisville. You want to check out all of this action. You want to log on to the FanDuel Sportsbook. Get ready to tackle the NFL action, by the way, with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more right on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Thank you so much for making the ACC squad your first listen and your first watch today. Make sure you check out all of our other shows for the next listen. I host Locked on Canes, Jackson on Locked on Syracuse, Grayson on Locked on Wolfpack, JJ on Locked on Blue Devils, Dalton on Locked on... Talk about Louisville in a second, guys, but... Uh, you know, at Florida State, uh, they're they're one and seven now overall. And you know, earlier this week on on Locked On ACC, I examined the you know the the preseason ACC poll uh, where you know, Florida State was almost a, a consensus repeat champion. It's pretty incredible how far they've fallen. I mean, Miami like essentially treated that game kind of like a scrimmage. Uh, you know, Florida State they they did do a good job on Xavier Restrepo and some of Miami's passing targets. So Miami just decided. Let's just run the ball today, and they rack up 230 yards. Damian Martinez had 148 yards and uh, and two touchdowns in that one with a great performance. 
We got new. We got new Dalton in. Hello, hello, new Dalton. Uh, so you know, I, I I don't know. I don't know how much we learned uh, about Miami or Florida State, but I will say, guys, obviously a bounce back for Miami's defense, but Florida State's offense is the slump buster for any for any defense out there. But I will say, Miami has shown the past couple of weeks that. Their offense can really be a pick your poison because early in the season, it was really all Cam Ward and not a whole lot of the running game. The past couple weeks, Miami had 219 rushing yards against Louisville, 230 yards against Florida State. So there's there's a whole nother aspect to that offense that needs to be respected. Hey, uh, Dono, how'd you enjoy the bye week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much what actually that might have been easier than Miami's got another bye week coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, the, the bye week is only a uh, seven point underdog where Florida State was uh, was a couple touchdowns. So I, I got to I got to give it to the schedule makers. I mean, they're aiding in Miami's quest to win the ACC. I mean, we talk about the referees rigging games for Miami because, you know, referees have an agenda. Clearly, we all know that. Yeah. You know, you know, they're all rigging it. Well, how about the ACC schedule makers? I mean, giving them another bye week? Why do they get three? <laughs> Why do you get three bye weeks? Dono, this is not yeah. fair. Florida State's not a team. They're not a team. They're, they they got players. They, they got players in uniform. Right? It, it's like if you put me and, and Grayson and, and JJ and, and Dalton and Dono, you can be the quarterback if you really want to. I mean, that's how bad Florida State is. Like, they're not a team. It's giving so I, major... I looked at the game and I was like, well, I, I so cool. Oh, they did a good job on their pass catchers. Yeah, so they ran the ball 150, whatever. Yeah. It's a bye week. I hope it was a good practice for you guys. Bishop Sycamore. That's, all that's I what say. I was going to say. Yeah. Bishop Sycamore. <laughs> Bishop Sycamore. That's what they I forgot about that. They're Bishop Sycamore. That's and and Miami is IMG Academy. It was a bye yeah. week. It doesn't, doesn't count. It's I mean, it does there. technically count, but still, it doesn't count. Yeah. Free space on the bingo card is what it was. It's just been crazy to watch Florida State the whole season just not be able to find wins. And and you look at what's left for I mean North Carolina, Notre Dame, Charleston Southern has the same record as Florida State at one and seven. Give me Maybe. Charleston Southern, and what's then Florida the closed out the year. I mean, it's crazy what this uh, last stretch looks like for one win could be possible. Yeah, two maybe from a team that went undefeated in the regular season last year. I remember we had joked on here after they started 0-3 and lost to Memphis, like how bad could it actually get for Florida State? It is still getting worse, right. believe it or not. And their last that was the last games... time we saw Brian Smith, the poor guy. He's, <laughs> yeah. been, uh, he's been in mourning <laughs> since then. Done Brian Smith. He, he's, he's on the podcast right now talking about the latest recruit that's decommitting from Florida State. It's it's <laughs> oh. objectively hilarious what is going on. I right mean, what, what's left to talk about at this I mean, point? Uh, I mean, let's, I, I think I speak for the rest of the league when I say that the, the Florida State fan base has talked no trash over the past couple of years. And, and it would be so much worse if this school decided to suit. Oh, wait, that's right. Both of those are true i don't feel bad i no. am i think it's hilarious like you said jackson it's hilarious because if it was happening to anyone else you know how that fan base will be reacting so no it's it's pull no no pull no punches here the florida state fan base i'll say they're a special breed and you guys i hear from them a lot obviously as the host of locked on canes and you know what's crazy about it is the Florida State fans are trolling Miami for not beating them by more than 22 points. <laughs> That, that, that's how, I'm dead serious. Oh, no, you guys didn't do a good job in your bye week, man. Those bye week practice, <laughs> yeah. that wasn't a good practice. It's it wasn't a good practice. Be better. Back out there, man. Come on. Yeah. You know how bad things had to be when like, it, I was, I'm a Louisville fan, right? I, I watched a Louisville basketball the past two years win a combined 12 games, the worst two year stint in program history. That's something we pulled. Oh, you only beat us by 31. Oh, you oh, beat us oh I got one for you. How about, how did Clemson do against Florida State this year? They, that was a 29-13 game. Yeah, so Miami point. fared better. Yeah. I, maybe Florida State just plays better when they're playing better competition, but they still get their butts kicked. Yeah. Yeah, it's rough. Well, I I, I do I, I want to give uh Dalton the floor because I I, I was watching uh what, what was it? Was that the Friday night game? Yep. Uh, I was watching I was watching Louisville down 20 nothing against Boston College. Like I'm I'm about to to turn the game off. Uh, Louisville makes it 27. Like, okay, m m maybe they got something percolating here. They come all the way back to win that football game. Now, Dalton, Louisville has been an absolute roller coaster this season, but 
it, it had to be pretty fun to be finally on on the right end of that roller coaster ride. It's been a lot of drama mean taken this year. Um, yeah. I, I've been getting a lot of motion sickness. Truthfully, it's there is something like I said. There's something to be said for making a comeback like that. It was uh, the only time in program history that the team won a game when they were trailing by ten points in the fourth quarter. As sad as that is, um, yes, it was a team you were supposed to beat. Yes, you were able to come back. I, I, I think we might have lost him. Hold on, and until until we get him back, well, let me let me run a tease. Uh, you know what? It, I'm I'm glad the Louisville comeback worked out because uh, the the Dalton monologue did not work out. Did not get it over the finish line. But uh, I want to talk about how the ACC is faring uh, in the Associated Press rankings, uh, and I want to talk about the big games coming up this weekend because there are some pivotal matchups. Seven games involving a whole. Oh, all right, here he is. He, he's back. So Dalton, I'll, I'll let I'll let you finish your thought. Bill you O'Brien, saying, you know, team. Line. That's I just right. Feared, Bill O'Brien sabotage like in the first quarter. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, but you're back. You came yeah, back. You're back. Yeah, Look at that you. Is, that is right. There, there's now we got two Daltons. We <laughs> almost got two of them. I don't know what's going on with the Wi-Fi. It's about as shaky as the Louisville pass defense in some situations. But <laughs> uh, I have to make fun of it, or else I'm going to cry. It's. It is what it is. Truthfully, I, I give credit to the team for, for making the comeback. It's not always the easiest going on the road and winning in conference play, even though Boston College doesn't have a great home atmosphere. But, but still, there's something to be said about making that comeback. So with the when the narrative was that this team was going to quit on Jeff Brom, it was nice to see the opposite happen. But you also have to talk about this is the sixth straight game with a lackluster first quarter, and they're digging themselves into holes that they're sometimes have been able to get out of three times this season. They have not been able to. So hopefully, and what I said on, on the show that dropped today, hopefully the second half comeback, regardless of opponent, hopefully that's the random spark that sort of, uh, that was what Louisville so desperately needed to, to gear up towards this last portion of the season. Uh, and we'll find out really, really quickly in, uh, in death Valley junior next week or this upcoming week, I should say. I love that. Well, we'll talk about the big games coming up this weekend. You guys want to keep it locked right here. We're not done yet on this brand new episode of Locked on ACC on the squad. Folks, our friends over at Five Hour Energy, they know that being a passionate football fan isn't just a hobby. It's a way of life. It takes a lot of energy to power through all the day tailgates touchdown celebrations, or an agonizing second overtime. Uh, now, Manny Diaz was not interested in another overtime, as we saw. But that's why 5-Hour Energy has created uh, the Stan the Fan 5-Hour Energy Shot with a special flavor called Fan Fuel, the energy shot made just for super fans like us. The fans who are first in the parking lot and who are the last to leave, we see you. Folks, we also got a bit of Fan Fuel this week, watching Louisville pull off the comeback. Watching Miami win a rivalry game, uh, watching SMU somehow survive against Duke in overtime, Five Hour Energy knows that no matter what team you root for, being a fan requires heart, soul, and a whole lot of energy. Whether you're prepping for the big tailgate or ironing your jersey, your game day to-do list is always a mile long. That's why the limited edition Stand the Fan Five Hour Energy Shot is here to help keep you fueled throughout the season. What's your fan fuel this week? Whatever it is. Do it with 5-Hour Energy. Available on 5HourEnergy.com and shipped nationwide. Thank you so much for making this episode of The Squad your first listen and your first watch today. We're free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. Make sure for your next listen, you also checked out Locked On College Football. Spencer McLaughlin does an awesome job going through all the big games and all the big storylines uh, as we march towards that college football playoff coming up a little bit later on this year. Uh, all right, folks, uh, let, let's talk about uh, the Associated Press rankings. Uh, you had some movement involving ACC teams as we pull it up here. Uh, Miami, you know, they they beat uh, Florida State on their FSU bye week. They move up a spot to number five. Texas moved down um, to number six. Next ACT, ACC team on the list is Clemson. Clemson had the bye week. Uh, they somehow moved down two spots. Didn't even uh, play last week. They moved down to number 11. Uh, you had the Pitt Panthers moving up a spot uh, to number 18, and SMU moved up actually two spots. Uh, I felt like Pittsburgh probably should have had a bigger upward move uh, than SMU did, and those are the four ACC teams that are ranked. Guys, did, did they get anything wrong there? And 
how many ACC teams do you think have a, a legit shot of getting to the CFP at the end of the year? I mean, I, I think the, the rankings themselves, ultimately, yeah, Clemson going down is a little bit of a head scratcher, although some other teams won. It is what it yeah. is. I do think that Pittsburgh, as much flack as I give them, going up only one spot after the performance on Thursday, I thought probably should have been maybe two to three spots. But again, we're kind of splitting hairs here. I mean, the good news is you have all the opportunity in the world the next two weeks to try to claim an upward spot, as opposed to your other question. College football playoff is going to be very interesting because like you and I kind of talked about before the show, Dono, what happens if you get three uh, teams, you know, in conference play that go undefeated and what happens there? Let's say Miami, Clemson and SMU all go undefeated. How's that going to you know, affect who ends up getting in? Obviously it's going to be, um, you know, what win percentage of, of their schedule in terms of conference play, but I mean, I think that you have the ACC winner that gets in. I think at most you can get one more team in. I, I don't see a situation where you get three ACC squads in the college football mm-hmm. playoff. Yeah, ACC fans aren't going to like what you just said, but it's true. true. You, it's true. You, yeah, you might be right. You might be right. I, I mean, obviously, whoever wins, that's a guaranteed berth. What you really need to have happen – to get to maximize the amount of teams is you need like a, a pit or an SMU to actually win the conference. Because yeah, I think Miami with one loss is still in no matter what. I think we can all agree on that. They're in no matter what, right? One loss are in. Uh Clemson, that's tricky if they lose two. Yeah, I but nice. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe you do bring up it, a you bring up like the only way it could happen though, because if SMU yeah. Uh, it, would, it would have to be SMU because Pitt and Clemson play. If let's say SMU ends up winning, oh, oh we got Kenton. Oh, there we go. He's here. Look at him. You thought I was going to miss the opportunity to talk to Grace, to talk to my boy Jackson Hosier today. Y'all thought I was going we to already know what you're going to say, so just yeah. say it, and I'll give my counterpoint, and then go. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. I wanted to check on you, Jackson. I know that was a rough. On the rough Thursday night, how are you? Are you okay, Jackson? I just want to know. Look, you're look, okay. I'll tell you why we're okay. All right, you ready for you know? You ready for this? Talk to talk to me. Talk to me. Look oh, at my back. Oh, basketball. Yeah, basketball. I'm, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this. See, and this is how I knew me and Jackson were gonna disagree because I think Syracuse football is actually okay. I think they're fine. I think they're ahead of schedule, and I think that outside of McCord being being Mount McCord, because I told everybody it's like a volcano. The longer it takes past when it's supposed to erupt, it's going to happen in spectacular fashion. But I'm, I think if I'm you, I'm happy because the rest of the team outside of McCord is that good. And y'all are way ahead of schedule. So if anything, I came here to just make sure you were you weren't ready to jump off the cliff and say, we're a basketball school because your football team still has a lot of things in front of it. You know, no, we're fine. We're okay. fine. Oh. Kenton, we're fine. The fan base is okay. We've recovered. We're good. There we go. There we're we good. go. I was we're just good. checking on you. We, we have accepted. I think the collective fan base has accepted that this has been a very good first year under Fran Brown. Absolutely. We're all happy with yeah. that. Five and two, we would have signed one. up for. Obviously, we didn't want to get our butts kicked against Pitt and uh, Kyle McCord. I mean, he had – I would say, Kenton, you're wrong because – you, you you think that that spectacular implosion was going to happen. You're wrong. That was the worst game he's ever played in his life. I like, mean, that's listen, what I said. That but, was his worst but, game in his life. But his that's life. what I mean. But that's what I mean by too many McCord moments were held underneath the surface. They so were that, bubbling okay, up. So that's they were waiting to come out. You got me. You got me. Because he was playing you. so good for so long that the collapse <laughs> just had to be the biggest collapse. Exactly. I exactly. And here's the Makes thing. sense. Here's the I get thing. it. Did thing. you really think he was going to go th- throw five picks and three of them would end up in his Ellen end zone? I, I didn't know five was on the way, but I knew he at least had a three-pick game on the way. Oh, I, I, agree. Told I mean, look, 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 look. I mean, three picks, that, that happens. That 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 happens. But uh, hey. five? Hey, Jackson, Jackson, I love you. I just want to make sure you're okay, man. We're I just want to okay. make sure you're okay. We're okay. We're okay. We're okay. We're okay. We're okay. We're okay. He's we smiling ear to ear right now. I was geeked up. I was geeked up like Fabo in 08. I'm telling you, I was geeked listen, up. Listen, here's the thing. He, he put on a suit for you, Jack. Yeah, absolutely. Full suit. Yeah, and I'm out here wearing a hoodie. I look like online. I just woke up in the morning or the evening, whatever it is. I did not, but I just decided to wear a hoodie on this one. But, I mean, look, the fan base is actually okay. I mean, yeah, it sucked. 
it, it sucked, but we're okay. Like for we're year, looking yeah. at the schedule still and we're like, all right, like, can we still pull out eight reg- regular season wins? Like, can we still do Absolutely. that? Maybe. All right. So if we go eight and four, First year under Fran Brown. That's a damn good year one. That's a good That's year. A good year. That's a good year, yeah. and their their recruiting is is getting better and better under Fran Brown. So, it's it's a step in the right direction. I mean, you didn't want that to happen. Again, it, I just I just came okay. here to check. Fire came to check in on his ice to make sure you were okay. We're you know, okay. I was coming to we're make okay. sure you were okay. And guess That's what? And guess what? We got basketball coming too. We got basketball too. It's while, happening. While you're checking, Kenton, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. Going plus six in the turnover department and finding a way to lose a football game, special teams mishaps every – I'm not okay, Kenton. I'm going to tell you. you're checking in on all of us. I'm going to tell you, this has been a week of vindication for me because I told everybody that Kyle McCord wasn't it. This week he showed it. I told everybody, I'm not sure about Malik Murphy. I mean, they're winning, but I'm not sure about that kid. Everybody said, oh, you're just mad because Duke beat NC State last year. Oh, you're just – hey. This was a big week of vindication for me. That's why I showed up in a suit. That's no, why I showed up. You know, so I had to let y'all know. I can't handle Kenton, that. Kenton, Kenton, funerals Kenton, what are your thoughts on the Pitt out. Panthers now being only ranked 18? You know, I mean, we all know what that is, right? We all know it just means less in the ACC, apparently. Because if you slap an a, a SEC on their chest and you give them this exact same record against these exact same teams, all of a sudden, you top know, 10. you're you're getting a, exactly, you're getting a top 10 team out of this group. I don't understand how we continue to underrate this team despite all they do is not only win, they won impressively against the the best team that they played all season, according to many. I don't understand what else Pitt can do, right? I get it. I I understand, right? Narduzzi and and company allegedly leave locker rooms dirty. Hey, I understand. I get it, right? Narduzzi, do better. Stop doing that. But I'll tell you what else he leaves dirty. The opponent's jersey because they are knocking some. I'm, I'm not. I was about to make us lose our clean rating. They are knocking some heads in the dirt, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> they are knocking some heads in the dirt. So you know, I don't see what else. What else can Pitt do outside of dominating Clemson to get the ranking that they deserve? And even then, I think that more people would disrespect Clemson because of that than give Pitt yeah, credit and say, true. you know what? Both Pitt and Clemson are playoff teams. I mean, you're absolutely right about that, and I'm not expecting Pitt to beat Clemson. I think Clemson's going to win that game, but you're right. If Clemson doesn't win that game, the narrative is going to flip more on Clemson than it would be giving credit to Pitt. I got Panther fever. I'm rocking with them boys all the way. I got Panther fever. I'm rocking with Eli Holstein. I'm rocking with the Sharks at linebacker. I think those boys going to hunt all the way. Oh, man. My friends, this has been an awesome episode of the squad, as always. Wow, you 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 uh, you scared you scared away. You scared away Dalton. He's gone. He's gone. We, we scared he's away us. Dalton. He's left us, ladies and gentlemen. For, for, <laughs> here, here he is. I think he's back. I want you guys to enjoy the ACC football this coming weekend. We got Duke at number five, Miami. We got Stanford and NC State. We got Virginia Tech at Syracuse. UNC at Florida State. Louisville at number 11, Clemson. Number 18, Pitt at number 20, SMU. We're going to recap everything that happened next week. Uh, for hold Jackson on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on. I just yeah. want to know. I just want to know what's worse. Dalton's Wi-Fi or Kyle McCord? <laughs> Dalton's Wi-Fi. You know, oh, it's no, Kyle McCord is, by Bob. Sure? Kyle McCord by Bob. It yeah. only it only acts up on locked on ACC. How and many I think times it, I think has Dalton's Wi Fi gone out? It makes it First, go well, how many interceptions did Kyle McCord throw? Well, Dalton's Wi Fi goes out, but it comes right back. Kyle McCord, on the other hand, let me tell you something. He was giving out gifts on Christmas early. He said, "Hey, we're playing Secret Santa. You get a pick. You get a pick. You get a pick. And go ahead, and go six on there on top of it. I love it." Oh, we will talk to everyone next time on another episode of The Squad right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.